Good evening, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I want to acknowledge the Earthly Mother, who is Wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also want to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this little update and gives us some more knowledge and understanding of some things that have happened to us in the past the things that are happening to us currently, and the things that are soon to come on this earth in a very short amount of time. Wanted to make a quick video concerning some of the things that I'm seeing going on here in the world, beginning here in America. Been doing a little research on, you know, the uh, fall of the Roman Empire and how uh, America is uh, following the exact same um progress or regression as the uh, Roman Empire. You can see its rise and its fall. And uh, if you really study what happened during the Roman Empire, you will now see what's going to happen or what's happening with this revived Roman Empire. It seems like this uh, empire is, uh, it's finished its course. It's, uh, it was used by the Most High to punish his chosen seed line. And now that we're coming out of that time period of us having to go through our punishment, he is now putting this um, this cup that he's used worldwide away. This cup of Babylon. This cup of um, you know of confusion is falling very quickly. You know, I didn't realize. Well, you know, as, as we do of our study, we're not sure because it always seems like this system and this country is going to go on forever. But now we can see the collapse is picking up steam. And it's actually um, starting to, things are starting to happen so quickly at a breakneck speed, it's hard to keep up with all the things that are going on. But as I study the, uh, you know, the similarities of this country and Rome, it's just amazing to see. So I started doing some uh, more research on um, the Moors and um, and how that happened, uh, how that took Rome down at the end, I'm trying to get some more um, knowledge, understanding of what's going to happen here in the near future. But it's uh, it's crazy to sit there and see how everything is just following the exact same pattern as before. And right now, you know, very few people are even aware that the government is even in a shutdown. And I wanted to say, I saw an article, it was, it was like 16 to 20% of the people were even aware that there was a government shutdown going on. But it doesn't surprise me because during the time of Rome, when people um, were, you know, didn't have money, didn't have um, food, couldn't take care of themselves, what the government gave them was bread and entertainment. And that's exactly what you're getting now. You're getting your NFL playoffs. Many people are getting... Um, you know, help from the government, um, you know, as far as uh, government programs in order to uh, maintain themselves because the economy in uh, this country, as I said, it's, it's in such a horrible state that there aren't really any jobs that you can actually get that can actually sustain you and that uh, most, most are in need of some type of uh, help from the government. So just like that time when they gave entertainment, they gave entertainment, you know, the Coliseum and the gladiators, and they gave bread in order to keep people from realizing what's going on. That's exactly what's going on right now. We have many people watching the uh, N the NFL playoffs, the NBA, and uh, and getting a little bit of food for the, um, you know, to party and uh, just, you know, drink their uh, cares away. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Because to really look at what the state of this country and what's really going on will, um, you know, will just bring horror to many people's eyes. Because, you know, most of the time people seem to think that, you know, America's had rough times before, but eventually it'll work its way out of it. And many people seem to think that they're going to, uh, they're going to profit as this place demise, you know, goes into, a, it starts to get worse and worse until it says it enters its demise. There's always, you know, a lot of Edomites and a lot of people who agree with the, uh, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, Gentiles who, you know, are down with the Edomites and in, in their system. And they seem to think that they're going to, they're going to make money off of this collapse. And many times they would be right 
Many times they've been able, they've able to collapse, but it will come back. But the big difference now is that the Most High has awakened his people. Their time of being um, in their captivity is just about over. So all those other collapses before, there was a hope of uh, the country coming back from that because we were still stuck in our captivity. We were still uh, going through our 400 year um, sentence that we had to actually go through. But now that's coming to an end. So now that we've come to the end of our captivity and our punishment, now that is about to switch to the other nations. And we can see now that it is just picking up steam. You know, right now we get this government shutdown and there's hundreds of thousands of people that are forced to go to work and are not getting paid. Talking about public assistance um, being cut uh, by the end of the month. And if the government shutdown continues, um, like not, no assistance coming after March or after the month of February, who even knows they're going to make it to the front of February anyways. Now, if you really think about it, if the government shutdown continues for a few more weeks, a couple more months, the whole country will pretty much devolve into like a whole Mad Max scenario. That just shows you how quick that everything can change. Before, we used to think it would take years and years and years. Now you're talking about, you know, a couple of weeks of no changes as far as the, um, the government shutdown and not paying bills and, and not taking, um, not people not getting their public assistance and everything just going to hell really, really quickly. So the times of thinking that, you know, America is going to return to its glory days are over. So therefore, now the country goes ahead and gives uh, free bread, free entertainment in order to keep the masses content. Because to look at what's really going on, like I said, it's a very horrible scenario. And there's really no way out of it besides whoever the Most High is going to protect. And we've been getting chosen before this happened. You know, when people are always talk about, you know, I'm winning people for Christ and, and this, 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 and that. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, the whole Most High chooses me. The Most High has already been showing who he's been cho uh, choosing for the last few years, who he's been awakening, who he's been, um, you know, connecting people to. It was already predetermined before we were even born. So before all hell breaks loose, he's going to wake up people get them prepared, get them to see what's going on, get them to see that we are, we are surrounded by empty vessels with no spirits, in, no, no spirits in them, no soul. And now when the punishment gets ready to come for the uh, soulless vessels, the Most High has already um, prepared his people, prepared them for what's to come. I said, I understand that there's really no way out of this unless the Most High is protecting you. And that goes for myself as well. You know, the, the, during the time of the, um, the curses on Egypt, you know, the, the things were happening all around us. The curses were falling on everyone all around us. But nothing happened to us because the Most High had chosen to protect his people. And that's what they're going to see again. It's going to be a repeat worldwide and the groundwork is already being set with like said the government shut down the chances of public assistance being cut off and really quickly you know it's already going on two to three weeks of this government shutdown and um, it's, it's really no, looks like there's no end in sight and i was looking at a uh, lisa cabrera's video and then uh, someone put about um a comment about how this is just like a smoke screen and that there really isn't any more money and that they're kind of just using this as a, you know, as a smokescreen for the fact that there is no more money, which really could be true as well. We don't understand what's exactly going on behind the scenes, but when the Most High says, your time is up, your reign is over, you know, that's going to be it. There's not going to be going any forward. There's not going to be going, you're not going to be going forward any longer. You're not going to have extra weeks or years or whatever else, which is what we all kind of thought. 
you know, it's going to be like a slow, you know, slow demise. But it's not looking like that anymore. You start to look at the uh, stock market volatility. And that's a huge sign when you start seeing like on Thursday, the stock market was down 660 points. And then on Friday it was up 700 plus points. You know, if someone just, you know, smiles right, you know, the stock market will go up if it's the right person is smiling, you know, because they're looking for any good news that they can possibly find in order to uh, have a reason to make the uh, stock market shoot up. You know, if the wrong person, uh, you know, wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, it seems like the stock market drops hundreds and hundreds of points because there's no real fundamentals anymore on the economy. So they have to look for anything, anything will just, you know, shoot and make the market shift one way or the other. And that was a huge sign before the 2008 stock market crash was a huge volatility. So you start seeing like the stock market is already down 4,000 points uh, from its highs. And now it's just kind of just jumping hundreds of points up and going down hundreds of points. So it's just showing you that the most highs is giving plenty of signs that as soon as this, uh, this economy starts to, to crash, you know, and, and, the, and the, the shutdown isn't going to help. You know, it's like they're shooting themselves in the foot. But they already know that when their time is up, they're going to be getting evicted from our land here. And that's what's right around the corner right now. You know, and it's amazing because I'm going to I'm going to read a couple of uh, verses here from um, Second Baruch. Because it's just absolutely amazing what we're seeing. And a lot of it is just is is recompense. You know, I've been reading and doing a lot of studying and with some of my brethren, and we've just been finding uncovering all these uh, these events that have been hidden, things that have happened to our people for the last few hundreds and hundreds of years, and how it just links up with um, it links up with scriptures like the Book of Enoch and 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 we're gonna get into a little bit of Second Baruch, and it's just amazing how everything links up, everything makes sense now. And now we understand that they keep on trying to make it sound like, well, we lost our Christian values and that's why we're, you know, we're going down and this, 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 and that. No, this place was never based off of true Christian principles. Okay. Not, not of, uh, not from our, not from our book. Okay. It's, you're getting, now this recompense is coming for what has transpired to most high's chosen people. They're coming to the end of their 400 years of captivity and punishment. Which means now that the other nations are moving into their time of captivity and punishment. And that's why now you can see all over, all over the world, the United States here has lost its standing. Its economics, uh, you know, system is, uh, you know, is on the edge of, dis of destruction. The government is now shut down. And it seems like the government has ran out of money and ran out of options. Because when the Most High says, do you have no more time? There are no more options. Can't get an extension. That'll be it. So let's read a little bit here from the book of uh, Second Baruch. I'm going to read chapter 82. Therefore, my brethren, I have written to you that ye may comfort yourselves regarding the multitude of your tribulations. For know ye that our Maker will assuredly avenge us on all our enemies, according to all that they have done to us. Also that the consummation which El Elyon will make is very nigh, and his mercy that is coming, and the consummation of his judgment is by no means far off. For lo, we see now the multitude of the prosperity of the other people, though they act impiously, but they shall be like a vapor. And we behold the multitude of their power, though they do wickedly, but they shall be uh, like made like unto a drop. And we see the firmness of their might, though they resist El -El Elohim every hour, but they shall be accounted as spittle. And we consider the glory of their greatness, though they do not guard the statutes of El Elyon, but as smoke they shall pass away. 
and we meditate on the beauty of their gracefulness, though they have to do with pollutions, but as grass that withers shall they fade away. And we consider the strength of their cruelty, though they remember not the end thereof, but as a wave that passes shall they be broken. And we remark the boastfulness of their might, though they deny the beneficence of Elohim, who gave it to them, but they shall pass away as a passing cloud. The Most High bless them for a time, and they never acknowledge the Most High gave them that blessing. Okay? And let's get that really, let's link that up really quick to Romans chapter 9. Let me find that real quick. Romans chapter 9. Here we go. Let's start with um, Romans chapter 9, verse 22. What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? So he gave the vessels of wrath, these soulless vessels, a lot of time, okay, to rule the world. Let's go to 23. And that he might make known his, the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had a four prepared unto glory. So he gave them a lot of time to rule the world. But it's pretty much to, you know, for us to learn, for us to make our way back to the Most High so that he could bless us here at the end. Let me read that one more time. Romans 9 and 22 and 23. What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory he'd already prepared us unto glory so the people who have been awakened at this time understand that it was by grace not by us earning you know our positions the most high had already decided which position each person was going to get this is when you hear about people talking about grace. This is grace because the Most High has elevated me to a position that I did not do anything to deserve. He just, the only thing that I got was I got chosen. I did nothing to deserve being, um, you know, in this position that I've been put in. Um, and to be used in this way, I said, it's all a gift from the Father and has nothing to do with me being so great, so smart, and that goes with any of us. If any of us are being used by the Most High, it's a, it's a blessing from him because he's the one that has decided to open our eyes to understand what's going on at this, at this present time. And as you can tell how special we are, you know, as a people that have been awakened because there are so few of us because most of the time we go around, you know, like I said, with um, dealing with soulless zombies, empty vessels all the time. So it's a huge blessing. And I thank the Most High for that blessing every single day. Because I could easily be just like one of these empty vessels out here that we see day in and day out, having absolutely no clue what's about to smack them in the face. Last thing I want to read right now today. Same thing as Second Baruch. It's one of my favorite, uh, favorite books here. Second Baruch, chapter 13. I've read this a few times before, but uh, it's very fitting when you've seen all the things that are going on here in this world today and understanding that their time of ruling this world is soon going to come to an end. And the Most High is going to set everyone straight and put us and put us back in our position and put the other nations back in their correct, full, rightful positions. Second Baruch, chapter 13, verse 4. So that if ever those prosperous cities say, why has El Elohim brought upon us this retribution? Say unto them, you and those like you who shall have seen this evil, 
This is the evil and retribution which is coming upon you and upon your people. And it's destined time that the nations may be thoroughly smitten. And then they shall know, they shall be in anguish. And if they say at that time, for how long? You will say to them, ye who have drunk the strained wine, drink ye also of its dregs. The judgment of the lofty one, who has no respect of persons, on this account he had aforetime no mercy on his own sons, but afflicted them as his enemies, because they sinned. Then therefore were they chastened, that they might be sanctified. But now, ye peoples and nations, ye are guilty, because ye have always trodden down the earth, and used the creation unrighteously. For I have always benefited you, and ye have always been ungrateful for the beneficence. Those two chapters there are so very, very important and enlightening and give great understanding from the times that we are in now. Only thing that people can do is deny the truth at this point. They can't admit the fact that they've had the true seed of the Most High under their foot this entire time and that judgment is coming for anyone who has been part of that. That's why people are still worried about making money on Bitcoin and Litcoin, Litecoin and gold and silver and buying property in other countries and running away. None of those things are going to save them. But I don't, but what else do they have? I, they can't admit the truth. Like I said, the truth is too terrifying to really um, grab, put your head all the way around. You know, we got plenty of people now in the truth telling these, telling these people what's really going on. And they just refuse to uh, admit that it, um, it could possibly be the truth, even though it fits biblical prophecy absolutely perfectly. The thing, all the uh, curses that we've been under and all of the blessings that they have received. And now the switch at the end, which is all biblical as well. And they just refuse or the Most High just will not allow them to see it. Well, we're going to see what this week brings. I heard that possibly uh, Trump might uh, declare a, a state of national emergency. So who knows what's going to be going on in the very near future. All we can do is put our faith in the Most High and have faith in the fact that he's awakened us for a reason to prepare us to rule and reign in the very near future in our own lands as he blesses us again and, right, and puts us back on top like we're supposed to be. And we can be the true kings and queens and priests that we're supposed to be. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Again, I want to acknowledge the earthly mother who was wisdom, who was the Holy Spirit. I also want to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. Let's see what this week brings. Shalom.